Thus far, we've looked at substances that are either weakly acidic or weakly basic and talked about Ka and Kb. But there are substances that may act as Bronsted bases or Bronsted acids, and they're called amphiprotic substances. Amphoteric substances may be acidic or basic in a more general sense, in the Lewis acid-base theory sense, which we'll touch on later. But for now, amphiprotic substances are Bronsted acids or bases. They have the capacity to act as either because they have both acidic protons and basic non-bonding lone pairs or basic electrons in their structures that can accept protons. So bicarbonate anion is a great example of an amphoteric molecule. It's got a proton which has the capacity to be lost. So notice what's happening here. HCO3- has this H plus built into it, and when that H plus is transferred to H2O, we end up with H3O plus there, and the conjugate base of HCO3 minus, which is CO3 2 minus. Make sure you understand why CO3 2 minus is the conjugate base of HCO3. In the bottom case, now we're actually thinking about a proton in water being transferred to HCO3 minus to produce H2CO3. So now notice that the HCO3- is acting not as an acid, but as a base. And let's underline it in a different color to emphasize that. And what we're producing is the conjugate acid of HCO3-, which is H2CO3. So bicarbonate can donate a proton, that's what we're seeing here in reaction number one, or accept a proton, and that's what we're seeing here in reaction number two. It's amphoteric. The most important and most famous amphoteric substance, or amphiprotic substance, is water. Water has an acidic proton. Let's see. Let's think about it as that one right there. But it also has basic lone pairs on the oxygen. And so that proton can be transferred, and the result is hydronium, the conjugate acid of water, and hydroxide, the conjugate base of water. This reaction is known as the self-ionization of water, or auto-ionization is a fancier term for it, and it's an important process in both pure water and in solutions of other solutes with water as the solvent. So for aqueous solutions in general, this reaction is really important. The particular equilibrium constant for this, you know, do we call it a Ka or a Kb? Well, water is acting both as an acid and a base, so it doesn't really make sense to call it a Ka or a Kb. We call it Kw, the equilibrium constant for the self-ionization of water, and it has a value that's fairly famous, 1 times 10 to the negative 14th at 25 degrees Celsius. And based on what we understand about equilibrium expressions and reaction quotients, think if we think about the phases here, hydronium and hydroxide are both aqueous, and the H2O molecules are part of a pure liquid water phase, and so the form of the equilibrium expression or the reaction quotient is H3O plus concentration times OH minus concentration with nothing in the denominator since all we have on the reactant side are pure liquids. One interesting point to note as well is that the self-ionization reaction of water is endothermic and Kw increases with temperature. It does have a weak temperature dependence, although 99 times out of 100, you'll use this value of 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. It's a value that's worth committing to memory and, and getting familiar with using for reasons that we'll see here shortly when we talk about the relative strengths of acids and bases in a later section. Now, one thing we can do with Kw is determine the concentrations of hydronium ion and hydroxide ion in pure water at 25 degrees C. So we already know, for example, that the value of Kw at this temperature is 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. We also know that this is equal to the product of the concentration of hydronium and hydroxide. And if we go back to the previous slide and think about how those species are generated, we should notice that for every one hydronium molecule we get, we get one hydroxide molecule. The stoichiometric ratio here is one to one, and that means that these two concentrations must be equal to each other, and that's worth writing down. In a pure 
water solution where there is no a pure water sample, I should say, not a solution at all, a pure water sample, these two concentrations must be equal to each other since self-ionization of water is the only way we can generate them. This will stop being true in aqueous solutions of acids and bases, which is why I'm sort of emphasizing it now for the time being. Putting these two things together, for example, we could write, well, all right, if I substitute in H3O plus concentration where OH minus concentration appears above, I get that the H3O plus molarity squared is equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. And doing some basic math, taking the square root of both sides here, gets us to the hydronium concentration is equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 7th moles per liter. That's our hydronium ion concentration. And then logically, right, well, we already said earlier that the hydroxide concentration must be equal to the hydronium ion concentration. And so we can immediately write right now that the hydroxide concentration in pure water is also 1 times 10 to the negative 7 moles per liter. And you may be familiar with this idea that the pH of pure water at 25 degrees C is 7 and the pOH is also 7. We noted earlier that acids and bases can generate hydronium and hydroxide respectively in water. And so, for example, when an acid is dissolved in water, the hydronium ion concentration all of a sudden becomes quite a bit greater than 10 to the negative 7 moles per liter. So, for example, in this problem, we're told that a solution of an acid in water has a hydronium concentration of 2 times 10 to the negative 6 moles per liter and we're asked okay what is the concentration of hydroxide ion in this solution at 25 degrees c which just enables us to use the familiar value of kw for this problem the key conceptual point here i think is that this equation this equilibrium equation is always obeyed in aqueous solutions regardless of any other solutes around. So we can write this equation and consider it as true even in acidic or basic aqueous solutions. So for example, if we know that the H3O plus molarity is 2.0 times 10 to the negative 6 moles per liter, well this in fact leaves the hydroxide concentration as our only unknown, right? Since we know that Kw at the given temperature is 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. So now we can solve for the hydroxide concentration fairly easily just by dividing both sides by the given molarity of hydronium in the solution. And when we do that, we arrive at a final result of the hydroxide concentration is equal to 5 times 10 to the negative 9 moles per liter. And there's an important intuition here that's worth noting. When the hydronium ion concentration is increased, by the dissolution of an acid in water, for example, the hydroxide concentration is decreased. Notice that this is less than 10 to the negative 7 moles per liter, while the concentration of hydronium is greater than 10 to the negative 7 moles per liter. And this is true in general in acidic or basic solutions and provides a good sanity check if we're calculating pHs, pOHs, or hydronium or hydroxide ion concentrations here. In this problem, we're testing our understanding of amphoteric substances by thinking about HSO3 minus the bisulfite ion. Let's write that down. It's a little nomenclature thing, but this is bisulfite. And we can think about bisulfite reacting with OH minus as an acid. Let's go ahead and, and write that. So HSO3 minus reacting with OH minus. And we can think of HSO3 minus also reacting as a base. And there, HSO3 minus is reacting with the strong acid HI. So HSO3 acting as an acid, well, acids donate protons, and the acidic proton in HSO3 minus is right there. In donating H plus, the products we'll get are H2O, or HOH is another way to write it. I'm going to write it that way for reasons that will become clear in a second. But with the transfer of that proton, 
the other product is SO3 2 minus. And notice also the charge is conserved overall. We started with an overall charge of negative 2 on the reactant side, and we ended with a charge of negative 2 on the product side, as we must. And the transferred proton is right there. That's why I wrote water here as HOH. All right, what about as a base? Well, now we have HI acting as the acid. There's the acidic proton. That proton gets transferred to HSO3 minus, and the resulting product is H2SO3, now neutral because the proton has increased the charge of that molecule by one unit, and losing the proton has resulted in a decrease in charge of HI to form I minus, the conjugate base of HI. So there you go. HSO3 minus bisulfite is yet another example of an amphoteric anion, so an anion with a proton that can be donated to a base, but that also has non-bonding lone pairs that can pick up or accept protons from acids, therein behaving as bases themselves.